Hello my friends and welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe in which we're playing as America. So at the end of last episode, I did not remember exactly which party a certain candidate I wanted to get and which he belonged to. So basically, I'll be honest, I want to get RFK into the presidency and I did not remember which party he was a part of, but I looked it up. He's part of the center NPP, so it was about time for some uh, change to get a little bit more support, hopefully for the... Uh, National Progressive Party, but the Feminine Mystique. Oh, I remember hearing about, hearing about this one. The problem lay buried, unspoken, for many years, in the mind of American women. It was a strange, stirring a sense of dissatisfaction, a yearning that women suffer in the middle of the 20th century in the U.S. Over and over, women heard in voices of tradition and Freudian sophistication that they could desire no greater destiny than to glory in their own femininity. The American housewife, freed by science and labor-saving appliances from the drudgery, the dangers of childbirth, and the illnesses of their grandmother. In the 15 years after World War II, this mystique of feminine fulfillment became the cherished and self-perpetuating core of contemporary American culture. But on an April morning in 59, I heard a mother of four having coffee with four other mothers in a suburban development 15 miles from New York, seeing a tone of quite desperation. The problem, and the others knew without words that she was not talking about a problem with her husband or the children or her home later after they had picked up their children at nursery school and taken them home to nap, two of the women cried in sheer relief just to know that they were not alone. I begin to feel I have no personality. I am a server of food and a putter on of pants and a bed maker. Someone who can be called on when you want something. But who am I? Betty Friedan, the feminine mystique. I want something more than my husband and my children and my home. Uh, and there it is. Cool. So, yeah, basically I do want to get RFK just because he sounds very interesting. And apparently he can get assassinated. Like, if you piss off too many people, if you go too far to one side... Uh, he needs to get assassinated, so I'm going to try to prevent that. Obviously, if things go poorly, I will be doing uh, methods behind the screen, behind in the background, or between episodes, to make sure that we actually go with the way we want. But let's go and do the start of something beautiful. The monsoons have charted the course of India's civilization since time immemorial. Their presence brought plenty to Rajas and tide swept defeat upon their foes. Their absence brought famine and destitution. Uh, didn't discriminate. Likewise, the Indian Ocean's strongest cyclone to date carries with it the howling winds of war. No longer distant, hypothetical, but now an oncoming certainly uncertainty, heralding its approach with thunderous thunder and rain. Upon Washington's request, the Army Corps of Engineers has begun constructing a stretch of border fortifications uh, from the Bay of Bengal to the Himalayas, dubbed the Bamboo Curtain. Every buck and sandbag laid onto its foundations represents a risky, no less genuine investment towards a free India's future. And at the same time, President Nixon hopes where one America has a place by its side as a trusted friend. They get more stability, we get two more off-map civilian factors, and our GDP will increase. How delightful, even though we only have five political power as we are improving our uh, naval XP. Now, last episode, we did lose a war against Guyana just because I think that does push up the NPP or the National Progressive Party support. That's why I decided to lose it. Uh... There's actually there was actually a crud ton of comments from the last video at the time of this recording. Wow, over 30, which was awesome. That's one some of those I've ever seen. But we have the perfect storm, Mr. President. We believe the dam is about to burst in Madagascar. Maurice wanted out. The perfect storm of pressures and crises, or crises, seemed about ready to completely tear the Indian Ocean apart, or at least that island. The president sat down in his chair, switching the phone to his left hand as he shifted through some papers on his desk. What's going on? I haven't heard any information in my daily briefings on the issue. The last I've heard was when we spoke right after we lifted that blockade. Wow, Madagascar does not look good. Well, Mr. President, there is a pandemic of black plague across the countryside. The Jews in the north are getting uppity, so to say, especially because of the chaos back in the mother country. SS units across the island have been in constant contact with Himmler and his underlings. Maurice is terrified he may be shot any day by his own guards, and the natives may re revolt soon as well. For its worth, we agree that, that his assessment that Madagascar is about to become a war zone. A perfect storm, all right! Well, give it to me straight. What are our options? Realistically speaking, that is. Well, Mr. President, you have two realistic options. This agency can affect the delivery of several crates of weapons, rifles, grenades, pistols, and the like for Maurice to hand out to his loyalists. The other option is to simply hand him a lump sum of money. He can then use that sum for bribery, purchases of his own, or what have you. We are an arsenal of democracy after all. They don't get guns. Money makes the world go... Ooh, they get more stability. Our... Wait, our reserves will lose some money. But our reserves will receive an influx of cash. Um... I think they mean Madagascar. I, I don't know if this is really going to affect anything. I'm just going to give them guns. I mean, we are an arsenal of democracy. So... Seems like quite the American thing to do. I love it. And Mr. Schmittler, on January 20th, 
a Ken Pai Tai an agent attacked Hitler in an attempt to assassinate him, but was stopped short by German security forces who swiftly shot him dead. Despite the undeniable Ken, pa Ken Pai Tai connections held by the agent, leaked obvious documents and sources close to Sunshine show no evidence of Japanese involvement, despite material method matching perfectly. This is corroborated by both Sakura and Lily, but sources close to the IGN and IJA could not further verify the information, and friendly agents in Germany were unable to retrieve the body and weapon for closer analysis. Oh! Hitler's health has been in a state of constant decline ever since the signing of the 45 Armistice. There's now strong reason to believe that he's no longer competent to lead Germany as many of his duties have been delegated out to various ministers and aides. Any attempt at a high-level diplomatic contact should be further impossible, or considered impossible, while Germany lacks a competent Führer. Despite an official nomination of his successor, successor, the Führer's succession line is far from assured. With the four candidates jostling for favor from the army, students, and other power bases, the situation is quickly turning volatile. The immediate withdrawal of Sunshine and Eagle is recommended for consideration. Number four, Hitler is estimated to have a maximum of six months left to live. Wow. Five, should Hitler die, a wide-scale armed conflict is almost inevitable in Germany. Six, should an extended... Conflict break out in Germany, the Unity Pact is likely to collapse, though armed conflict between the German Reich Commissariats seems unlikely, with internal unrest posing a much greater issue for many of them. Top secret. I, I, I love these CIA reports. They're really, really interesting. They're really, really fun. And you have your own little agents in the field. God. Uh, that sounds so much more interesting than the, than the actual intelligence agency, but that's just me. That's just me. Cool. And we'll start doing some more of that once we have one, two, three, four. Oh. We done? No, we, we ain't done. No, 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 no. Wisconsin? Minnesota, Iowa, they need more factories. Ah, there we go. Ah, Madagascar, thank you for exploding. Ah, uh, the collapse of Drew Madagascar, the everlasting legacy of the, of the Reich. And Missouri, Missouri, I've been through Missouri quite a few times, actually. It's a weird state, it's a very weird state. I've, I've not been to Jefferson City, I've been through St. Louis, it's very blue. Like, I think the University of St. Louis is like blue or something. It was really cool seeing the arch there. And I've, I've been to Springfield too, it's crazy. Kansas City. Oh, Kansas City. Kansas City. Those Kansas Cities. Cool. God, I want to help the Jews out. Why? Uh, actually, contact Jewish paramilitaries. Oh, man, I would love to do that. I would love to contact Jewish paramilitaries. I wonder if they could help them out here. That'd be kind of cool. What was... We have Israel here, right? Yeah, so do they have their own intelligence agency? Was it... I forget what it's called. It's like... I forget. What? Hmm. Like, if you can contact them and actually, like, work with them, that'd be kind of cool. But, preemptive strikes? Oh, man, we got a lot of research done. Wow. Uh, organ organic units? Yes, please. Recovery rate and organization? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, let's get some guns and stuff going. 64. That's a little bit ahead of time. Better anti-tank, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, get some improved anti-air equipment as well. Because we could always use that. Anything for Yes. Oh, 204. Don't mind if we do. Slowly cutting things down. Yes, 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 yes. We love India. The Yasuda crisis. What follows faster, a man or his shares? The start of something beautiful, my friends. I love India, especially the Republic of India. The men stood by the sill, calmly, and waited. Their turn to jump. Oh, man. That sounds terrifying. Uh, let's bring out the tinderbox. Ooh, Indonesia calls. Oh, Indonesia. Hmm. Well... New decisions with England. Ooh. Let's do England first. We never know what we, what we might get involved with. Shared heritage, inseparable economic ties, and a common purpose forged in the Great War's fiery baptisms has created a special kind of relationship between Uncle Sam and Fair Britannia. Theirs is a bond inadequately explained were one only to examine small parcels of both their histories, whether as erstwhile colony and overlord, as adversaries in the world stage, or as allies against the fascist menace. Though Britain's wooden wall had been broken before the Reich's assailments and made puppets of their free men, America's heart and minds yearn still to wrest their freedoms back. Luckily, a force which can affect such exists in Her Majesty's most loyal resistance, also kindly known as Himmler. Hmm. President Nixon pledges to uphold this special relationship both before and when America's other plays its hand. Ah, yes. If we can help him out, that'd be great. We are an arsenal of democracy. Yes, please. Hopefully, in this episode, we might see Mr. Schmittler go, ah, and... Pass away. Huh, he looks like he's ready to go. Man. If Hitler would have lived until 63, he would have been nuts. A burglary in Washington? It wasn't uncovered until the next morning when a janitor noticed flecks of paint on the ground. He inspected the room and realized that it had become from the window frame, which had been pried open during the night with a crowbar. 
The police were swiftly called, and the Republican Democratic headquarters turned into a crime scene. Needless to say, the atmosphere in the White House was one of anxiety. There were no eyewitnesses, no fingerprints, and no signs of the getaway vehicle. Everyone felt that it had to be the NPP in search of re-election campaign strategies, but the President and those in the know had far greater fears. If the NPP, or someone sympathetic to the cause, was indeed behind the robbery, what might they have found out about Nixon's <clears throat> less than reputable campaign strategies from 1960? The past has a way of haunting people, good or bad. Usually when you say haunting, it's probably not good, but that's okay. That is definitely okay. Oh, America, we're going to make you into the best way we can. So, uh, the day after. Hey, you watch any of the Scottish Open? Of course I did. Palmer was playing and was projected to win. A bummer he lost to that Kiwi Charles. The Golden Bear also came close, but ended up bogeying on the last two holes. You remember why they held it in Scotland again instead of in Augusta or Cabot Cliffs? I think it was to rub in the face of the Germans. I don't think it was an attempt to rub it in the Germans' faces, but due to the status of St. Andrews. Oldest course in the world, you know. Guess that's the reason. Yeah, too bad Palmer didn't finish. He had a decent bet on him winning. Guess that money is gone now. I guess, man. I guess. I'll be honest, I know nothing about golf. Hmm. But you know what? Scotland? Even though these guys say they're in uh, the Unity Pact. Oh, man, I forgot that. Cornwall, do they have a unique focus tree? No, they're by Halder. Yeah, they don't. Not yet. Hopefully they'll have someday. Scotland, you love freedom, right? You love freedom, actually. Oh. The Anglo problem. Scotland has changed. We could be nicer. Scotland never changes. Um. Someday play as Scotland? Of course, then again, I don't know how, how much content they actually have for Scotland and for them to reunite the Isles. That'd be actually really cool. Whenever I played as England, though, they could reunite all the Isles except for Ireland. And I forget if they got if we got Ulster or not, but it was a little, a little disappointing that we could not get Ireland. Oh well. Hey, look at that. Our GDP growth is 3.9. Yesterday we got it up to 3.8, but now it's 3.9. Very nice. Military austerity, please. The in investigation concludes. For what feels like the first day in a long time. People are finally starting to breathe a little easier in the White House. The police's investigation of the Republican-Democrat headquarters break-in has been concluded, and while the identity of the burglars has yet to be known, the concern was less who they were and more of what they may have taken. While a number of the file cabinets were ransacked during the break-in, a cross-reference of the indexes revealed that hardly any files were missing. The only ones that were gone related to some re-election campaign strategies for 64, and those thankfully contained no mention of certain stunts pulled during the last election. The president's paranoia that the NPP were just as ruthless as he feared is beginning to dissipate, allowing him and his staff to once again focus on the state of the nation and other more important matters. This chapter of the Nixon administration has been closed, at least for now. And may it stay that way, but Freedom Riders. Fifteen riders gathered at the Greyhound Terminal in D.C. waiting for the next bus. It's been years since the first Freedom Riders had stood there, knowing that they would be placing themselves at risk as they traveled into the segregated South. And trouble had followed their forebears every step, every step of the way. Arrests in Virginia, Carolinas, Mississippi, before the horrendous beatings and arson attacks by the KKK in Alabama. A black man in his 30s turned to a white woman in her 20s, fidgeting next to him. Nervous? The woman nodded. I got the training and everything, but nothing really, really, really prepares you for what you see on the news. No, it doesn't really repair, prepare you. Not all the way, at least. The man replied somberly before offering a burned, scarred hand. Name's Marlo. Ask me anything. It's not my first time on a freedom ride. The woman gingerly took Marlo's hand. April, she mouthed. She tried not to look at the scars. Why did you come back? Marlo looked at his hands. The first time is scary, I know. Even if you know you're doing the right thing. He looked at the 12 people waiting alongside him. But after my first ride, I knew I'd come back for our brothers and sisters and fight the good fight. We were never meant to travel alone. Yeah, traveling alone kind of sucks, I'll be honest. Helping out a friend? Ah, yes. Yes. Break them in the caches? Send weapons to the resistance? Ooh, ooh, Brittany. We can use your black market systems. Oh, we can funnel guns. I love America. I love black market trading. Oh, let's, let's break up the caches, for, caches first, though. England has no shortfall or shortage of disillusioned civilians waiting, willing to trade their lives for the matrimony's rise white, right wise freedom. My apologies, I can't speak right now. Similarly, America has no shortage of guns, pistols, machine guns, factory fresh M14s, leftover stems from the Second World War, perhaps an armored car or three in a warehouse, and their corresponding ammunition. 
What, one may ask, will an assemblage of angry men do with weapons brought free of charge from a land which only has too many for itself? The answer might surprise some. After all, a free England expects creativity out of her every fighting ta. Nice. Oh, let them come in. Ooh, improve relations with Himmler. Oh, I want to do that, but I need to save political power. I've, I've heard that with a certain path I want to go, I need to save what we call a buttload of power, of political power, like a thousand plus. So, this is going to be a bit ridiculous. Oh, Emile Maurice asked for his extraction from Madagascar. Mr. President, Admiral Moore of Indian Ocean Command has informed us that the Rex Commissar of Madagascar is a close friend of Adolf Hitler. Maurice has asked us to evacuate him, although this would legally be questionable. Since the island is legally German, it could nevertheless reap the dual benefit of leaving the colony leaderless and therefore vulnerable enough for us to take control of, and to greatly embarrass Germany. What should we do? How tragic that we will have found this out by the time it is already too late. Give more the go-ahead. Rescue Maurice and begin preparations to install an OFN mandate. I have no idea what this is going to do, but if we can get more involved in conflict, which seems kind of not like Nixon, maybe? Because I know he's kind of a neutralist, he doesn't want to get in too many conflicts. Hmm. If we bring him home, that might increase the support of the NPP, though, which I doubt it will, but we'll try it. This looks really disgusting. I like the, I like the really, really light shade of blue that the Jewish Madagascar has, though. It's kind of nice. So we have one, two, three, almost five. Okay, cool, cool. And wait, so which one do they win? Ah, oh, the power vacuum. Oh, Maurice, you've gone bye-bye. Disastrous. Oh, God. Maurice is last year. There you go. Abandon the south, abandon the north. A call to Moore. Ah, oh, so they must have just finished that. Emil, liberty leading the people again. The powers of the great coalitions and alliances of human history have always weighed, weighed back and forth like a great scale. And now, as the unity pact stumbles, OFN chose to strike at the opportune moment, at the president's direction, and with significant monetary assistance from the State Department. The United Coalition Government of Madagascar, sort of stopgap measure, has been established. The end goal of the intervention is the creation of the OFN-friendly sovereign government, completely free from German and Nazi influence. So far, the effort seems to have been successful. Future politics is largely put aside in the name of total unity and opposition against the Germans and their agents. It will certainly not last, but for now there is stability among the friends to America and its OFN allies. Once more, onto the breach. Hopefully we don't get involved here. Oh, Hans. Oh. Oh, hold on. Oh, wait, we actually installed a public government. Um... I mean, we're not at war, but... Oh, I've had mandate. Ooh. Oh, man. No, wait, we're fighting... Our ally, our puppet is fighting Jewish Madagascar now. This definitely didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. I thought we'd just get the German guy and be like, hey, we got to do it here. Actually, this might backfire on me and increase Nixon support or Republican Democrat support just because, like, we got another nation into the OFN. That's a good thing for Nixon's side. Oh, the party split. Mm. Oh, Russia's on fire. Cool. Far right MPP. Center MPP. MPP, so. The news leaks. Uh oh. This morning, the press offices of the New York Times, Chicago Tribune, Washington Post, San Francisco Chronicle, Boston Globe, and a half dozen other newspapers of repute received the same anonymous package. Inside were a group of photocopies detailing how the Nixon campaign and the FBI conspired to wiretap political opponents during the 1960 election. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Needless to say, the outrage from the NPP was immediate and fierce. George Wallace took to national television in the afternoon. In an interview upon the front steps of the Alabama Capitol in which he looked to the cameras and called President Nixon a corrupt crook, and concluded with demands that he resign at once. The White House and the Republican Democrat National Convention have clamored up for a time being, refusing to issue a statement to the press about the document's origins or veracity. While keeping their heads low and letting it blow over may have worked in the past with minor scandals, something as broad as this is simply too massive to ignore. The press, the public, and especially the National Progressive Party will not tolerate Nixon's silence for much longer. Good. Good. So we want the NPP to grow in strength. That's really what I want to see. Um, 24, 12. That's not bad. We can improve this a little bit more, though. Uh, ooh, break them with the cashes. Yes, please. We want to increase party unity. This will make voters leaning towards our party more likely to vote for us, even if they feel closer to opposing a candidate. Cool, whatever. Ah, uh, yes. 
Yes, 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 yes. The first fallen domino. In keeping with its long, hallowed history of weaving polite fictions through force of will, the Reich has proclaimed Norway as a territory no less integral to its natural borders than the Rhineland and Bavaria. The Germanic people's sheer destiny in Germania's presumed fever dreams supersedes queries laid in with common sense such as how many Norwegians buy their tripe, and how many Germans would give their lives for Oslo. There at least exists an answer to the first question, namely, scant few outside of the collaborative government's sway, where the Einheit packed a line of dominoes, Langley surmises, and then, then then Norway's peace wobbles to and fro near the front, and with a gentle poke, well, things might come crashing down. Oh, death of a uh, guy in Thailand, state of the Supreme Court. is very conservative, as it's comprised of six conservatives and three liberals. Congressional stuff. We have 62 votes, which is plenty enough to pass laws. Ooh. 62, huh? 62 Democrats. And Democrat Republicans. And then 36 of these guys. That's cool kind of seeing another party in here. Oh, smuggled English weapons. Oh, God. Uh, I want to do that, but I need to save political power. Even if we don't do anything, they, they still might contact us. I'm sorry, guys. I'd love to help them out. But they can do it on their own. How much are we getting? Oh, wow. Two a day. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So, it's June 1963. Things aren't looking great for Nixon. They really aren't. Somewhat more unity. Nice. Very nice. Another factory. So, we got one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to cut construction some more. Prime Minister of Japan, Kaya. An economist touch, perhaps. He's popular. Uh, of course, Kishi has congratulated the appointment of Kaya as a Prime Minister, that Kaya truly represents the interests of the Japanese state. Damage control. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Oh, ooh, minus 3.4 billion? I can cut some construction spending by a little bit more now. Oh, bigger number. I like bigger number. Damage control. For the first time since information on the wiretap leaks to the press, Nixon has called a press conference in the ballroom of Washington's Mayflower Hotel. The press, obviously eager to hear his comments on the scandal, arrived in droves. The questions, many of which focused on the wiretaps, were biting and intrusive, but Nixon handled them with the skill of a master debater. He danced around the questions with such grace that plenty of people seemed to overlook that he never gave a direct answer at all. He changed topics. He spun yarns. He equivocated. But even all his skills couldn't stop the question of the wiretaps from coming up again and again. Finally, he decided to confront one reporter's question of, to what extent would you cooperate with a federal investigation into the possibility of a cover-up, head-on? After a lengthy non-answer on the values of liberty and egalitarianism, he concluded with, I will cooperate and in fact welcome this sort of investigation. I have never attempted to cover up a crime or obstruct justice because I have committed no crimes to cover up. This investigation will tell the American people what they need to know, whether or not the president is a crook. Well, I am not a crook. Uh-oh. Uh, that will be all. Thank you, gentlemen. Oh, boy. So we have one, two, three, four. Four some. For some. You know what? I'm okay with for some for now. That seems kind of okay with me. Just because... 6.9? Nice. Nice. Anything else over here? Tanks, of course. APCs. Uh, I just want to make sure that we got enough Hueys because uh, where we're going. We're going to need a few more eventually. So the first fallen domino. Open the black market. The Reich's new order has unleashed many travesties upon the world, but chief among them is legitimizing base hatred as an alternative to the Enlightenment's liberating principles. By now, a whole generation of Europeans have been taught that free will and the rights of man are assumptions, rather than principal axioms, which they are. Fascism stain on, Europe, on Europe's ancient societies will linger for decades before it fades away, if it ever fades at all. But no volume of Nazi indo indoctrination can excise man's impulse to seek the illicit, the unknown made alluring by its forbidden nature. How far the world is stray that common decency is merely an exotic import to the Reich's citizenry. But they yearn for it regardless. America will give them however much of it they wish to consume through Britney's unfettered ports. As long as I don't need to pay Brittany extra political power, that will be good in my book. Very good. 1.38. I am really tempted to increase civilian spending, but by 15%. Oh man, 35 billion in civilian spending. But no, people don't need money. Oh, this is demilitarized down here. Oh, in Nice. Actually, what's Germany up to? The American ambassador. Oh, okay. Friends in all the right places. I, it's been a while since I've actually played as Germany and TNO. Did I play as Germany and TNO yet? Did I? Did I not? I think I did. Have I? I'll be honest, I can't remember at the time of this recording. Uh. 
I really can't remember. My apologies. <laughs> I can't remember what I've done. Uh, let's see. Mutual exclusive more marine defense. That looks pretty good. That, I love the marines. I really do. Ooh, more, even more sortie efficiency, but air support? Air assault recovery rate defense and organization? Soft attack? I've, I've, this is new. I've never done this before. And this is kind of unique to TNO, so we've got to go that way. Uh, it's 63. I doubt there's anything else really here. We can just... Um, actually, level... So we can do level silhouette... Hmm. Hmm. Okay, well, whatever. Light aircraft, can we do anything here? No. Gun stuff, right? No. Uh, Marines. Uh, let's grab some of this. Air Assault 3. More organizations. Only two more organization, but I'll take it. And... Uh, what do we have? You know what? Just go ahead and grab better logistic companies. Actually, no. Scout helicopter. Oh, my gosh. Look at that reconnaissance. 6.5. Yes. Yes. We don't even have a recon on these guys. They have no recon. Oh, wait, if you, you can throw in a transport helicopter? So, wait, that gives you less XP loss, more trickle, plus 20% trickle back. Oh. Field hospitals gives you minus 20% XP loss, plus 30% trickle back, though. So, basically, I guess transport helicopters are similar to field hospitals, except that they give you a little more breakthrough, soft attack, heart attack, and give you a little bit less uh, trickle back. Or XP, an XP loss. Interesting. That's very unique. A conversation with Hoover, though. J. Edgar Hoover strode into Nixon's private office in room 180 of the State War and Navy building, not even stopping to knock. Dick, he said with exasperation, the files got out. Nixon's eyes darted up from his paperwork. What? The files got out, Hoover hissed, and so emphasizing the gravity of what he was talking about. You don't mean Nixon stood up and walked over to Hoover, silently gesturing for Rosemary to pause the tape recorder. You don't mean the black uh, male files, do you? Hoover solemnly nodded. How the hell did that happen? Nixon's step was rising. I thought you had them locked away. As I did, Dick, but that doesn't change what's on the front page of the post. Well, who did you hand it off to? They must have done it. Hoover shrugged. Could have been one of them, or could have been someone who snatched the files off their desk when they went for a smoke break. Amazing how such how much damage being left alone with a copier for two minutes can do. Nixon glared at Hoover's non response. Of course, I'll investigate the matter fully and try to prevent any further information and leaks in the meantime, Mr. President. He better, or the next leak will be his letter of resignation. Ooh, Hoover, you don't want to mess up, man. You really don't. Oh, that's even more money. Never mind, I'm more interested in... Oh, that's so nice. 127 billion? Billion with a b b b b Nice. Also, I apologize if I'm talking a little bit quieter. At the time of this recording, I'm doing this at night when people are sleeping, so... I hope I don't wake them up. That's okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, some. Hmm. We're almost done building in Missouri, Iowa, and Minnesota. We must have finished off Wisconsin. Wisconsin, you could always use more factories, man. Oh my goodness, we have more helis. Yeah, we're going to actually probably really invest in those. Yeah, do that. Open the black market. Thank you. And let us do integrate the support. Great. With the certitude of America's clandestine presence and the steel curtains edges emerges familiarity between the CIA and in their context in England and Norway. Their operations in turn have improved in both tempo and effect. As armed shipments adopt tight schedules without authorities notice and agents slip into and out of the fortress Europa with their revolving doors ease, the two countries' resistances ask Washington's leave to former to form closer ties with the company. For his part, Nixon recalls OSS's legendary exploits and its short-lived record. He believes a well-supported attempt to replicate its success deserves his full support. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to improve this more and more and more. Uh, I think we've got enough motorized for now. Yeah, go ahead and do this. I want quite a few more of that. That would be good. And of course, some more APCs and tanks, but that'll come naturally over time. Over time. Let's see. Forts. Something down here. Oh, it's only f oh, 40 planes. What the heck? Oh, you're only 40. There you go. What is that? Strato Fortress. Oh, these are like probably strategic bombers then. Yeah, they are. Military house. Mm. I mean, I could, we could afford this, but... Nah. Oh, a little bit of lag. That's why things aren't going. Oh, boy. Hmm. Nope. Goodbye. Minus seven point one. Yes. Yes. Oh, what's going on here? All right. Uh, let's say goodbye. The IJN 
Shinano bombing. Uh oh. It wasn't clear how the bomber managed to acquire a uniform, nor how he managed to smuggle his bag through the security checkpoint without getting searched. But no matter how it happened, the result was still the same. A man disguised as a dock worker managed to sneak a duffel bag full with a firebomb inside onto the deck of the IJN carrier Shinano, where it exploded late last night. And what could only be described as miraculous, no sailors or dock workers were killed, but three Japanese sailors and American firemen suffered serious burns during the explosion and subsequent attempts to put it out. The Japanese government is ap ap apologetic with rage, with their ambassador describing the bombings as an all but an act of war and presenting a long list of demands, which they likely drafted some time ago and were waiting for the opportunity as reparation. Most notable are massive increase in security around the ports, all on America's dime, of course, and a televised apology from President Nixon himself. Nixon, needless to say, refuses, or refugees, to let things go over that poorly. He has reached out through every diplomatic back channel to get the Japanese to avoid making a public release, insisting that he can make a deal that satisfies everyone while setting face. Gentlemen, please, let's not be too hasty. Please. Don't make me kill your entire navy off, because with, by God's grace, with all these extra planes, we have a lot of planes standing by, but these are all garbage. <laughs> okay, let's, let's go ahead and do this then. Boom. Now we'll be good. There you go. And jet fighters, continental missiles. I'm going to keep those for now. I bear announces the creation of Iberian Council. Cool. Russia's killing itself. Love it. Love it. Improved jet interceptors. Now we don't use those. Actually, you know what? I don't even want to be tempted. I don't even want to see that stuff. Interceptors go bye bye. Uh, so I could trade it away to someone else, but I don't really care. Fighters, casts. We're not making any. Gosh, God dang it. We need more military factories. Actually, how are you guys doing? We're still training. That's fine. God, I can't believe they own L.A. and San Francisco ports. Jesus Christ, what happened to America? Uh, actually, they... I don't know. I think it was the first episode someone explained how poorly America was affected by the war in which we had to give up those ports. And, of course, we lost Hawaii, too, which was not pretty good. I don't want to forget that. We're actually done training now, so... Stop doing that. Stop doing that. And stop doing that, too. Great. Uh, let's see. Screens. Three right there. Even though we could probably use screens right here, but whatever. Integrate the support. And I think I've done every single focus that we can besides the South African ones. I really don't want to get involved in South Africa right now. Because I wanted... Oh, I know we got these. Because I want to save this for around election time next year. So, bring out the tinderbox, or at least as close as we can get it. Make no mistake, the colonies of Japan has won from Europe may fuel its economy to meteoric heights. Meteoric heights. But by they are by no means eager in fulfilling the quotas chained to their backs. Discontent is a pox... Con Tournament. Con... Con... Ah, my apologies. Con... Attent. I'm sorry. To what Japanese planners disdainfully call the Southern Resource Area, where haphazardly scattered freedom fighters violently return Tokyo's denigrations onto its bellyguarded bella puppet regimes. The rising sun expected pliant mines and oil wells out of Southeast Asia. Instead, it acquired only a tray full of kindling right underneath its boot heels. In accordance, Langley has drawn up plans for sprinkling literal and figurative gunpowder throughout the region, then setting it alight with a right and proper spark. Concomitant. 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 My apologies. It's been a long day. <laughs> it's been a very long day. Cool. Cool. Uh, minus 7.3. Awesome. We get lower construction spending again, but we're good for now. Oh, one, two, three, four and a half. Mm, I don't know about that. What are we building up our factories? Oh, Texas. Oh, Oklahoma, too. We can throw some in Oklahoma. Oh, Arkansas. Were we just building, like, infrastructure straight down? Like, as Louisiana is next. Yeah, we are. Why did I build infrastructure like this? <laughs> this is very weird. Very, very weird. Yep. No, don't worry about that. Don't do that one, too. One, two, three, four, ten. The 63... Freedom ballot. And barbershops, churches, drugstores, and groceries. From the bustling streets of Jackson to the quiet, stricken towns of the Delta, black people in Mississippi are going to the polls. On the ballot is Aaron Henry, pharmacist and activist uh, for governor. Ed King, a white minister who's still recovering from a traffic accident that shattered his jaw, will be his lieutenant. Every voter knows that their ballots will have no power. That's not the point. The point is to make a statement to Mississippi blacks that voting is possible and to make a statement to the world that there is currently no such thing as democracy in Mississippi. More than 80,000 people will cast their votes in the 63 freedom ballot, several times more than are registered to vote in the entire state. Wow. It won't end segregation or voter discrimination. White civil servants will put on their suits tomorrow and quiz prospective voters on inane things and deny them the franchise. But they'll do it with a harsh light shining on them from outside. And years from now, when names like Fannie Lou Hamer our books in history, some astute students will see it as a beginning. Not a final triumph, but the striking of a match. Just like the river I've been running ever since. 
the 63 Stanley Cup. Hockey is, is at once a display of grace and a storm of frustration. As Torontoians rub their chins in anxiety, their hometown Maple Leafs, the defending Stanley Cup champions, duke it out with the Detroit Red Wings. Hmm, Kaiserreich. Men slide across the ice, making epic leaps and clever backhands, dueling with their sticks in a display of speed that brings to mind a shell game. One moment, they swarm around each other, desperately trying to assess the other team's next move. The next, it's an epic dash across the arena. Detroit is resentful. They've only won one game out of five in this final, and the fans in their hearts know that tonight could be the end of the line, two nights ago. They had to the lease with paper cups and programs after the game. The air tastes bitter. In the second period, Maple Leaf center Dave Kion manages to swing across the blue line around Alex Del Vecchio, getting Toronto its first goal of the night long after, though, Marcel Provnovost scores for Detroit. But with seven minutes to go, Toronto winger Eddie Shack, a foul-mouthed born entertainer with a penchant for sparking brawls on the ice, manages to break the tie with a deflection shot giving the Maple Leafs their second straight Stanley Cup. With a graceful swish across the ice and into the net, the crowd leaps from their seats. The Maple Leafs have won. Toronto has won. Canada has won. He shoots. He scores. America is sad. Especially in, in Detroit. Hmm. Alright, hold on. Oh, wait. So they're not killing each other. I thought they were killing each other. Okay. That's okay. Uh, I guess we have no content here, huh? It's kind of sad. Kind of really sad. Oh, I mean, I guess I do have technically have a focus tree, but hmm. Can I not zoom in it up? Okay. Oh boy, Mr. Hitler's dead. Schmittler, that Adolf Daddy is dead. The being who claimed and secured homage as virtually a living god has proved to be more mortal as his lowliest subjects. He now belongs to history. Church bells could be heard ringing across the Reich as the news broke. Hitler, supreme ruler of the Third Reich, passed away at the age of 73 in his Berdikov address or residence in Bavaria. Previous CIA reports indicated that his health had been failing in recent years, but the crises of the past years seem to have done him in for good. In America, and much of the rest of the world, the mood is in stark contrast to that of Germany. Spontaneous celebrations have broken out in Washington, New York, and in the South, in the West, all across the country. Even the occupied ports of L.A. and San Francisco. American workers and Japanese soldiers agree that Hitler's death is something worth celebrating. Publicly, President Nixon has not commented, but privately he has been reported as elated. However, it does appear that Hitler was a sole figure holding the crumbling Reich together. The NSA has already intercepted numerous communications from within Germany, indicating that a conflict is imminent. Semper sic... Oh, sic semper tyrannis. Man, my dyslexia, if I had any, is going on right now. It's interesting, though, that uh, the NSA... When did the NSA begin? That's my question. I should really look that up. Because you hear about the NSA, FBI, CIA, ATF... Mm, and you get frustrated. But anyways. Hello, NSA. Thank you for watching. Oh, I doubt the NSA is actually watching my videos. But they might be spying on me. Or the CIA. Or FBI. Mm, who knows? I don't. They do. I don't. Anyways. Oh, look at... Oh, I love Germany right now. Oh, they're so red. Oh, yes. Even Ausland is... Oh, come on. Boom, boom, boom. Actually, I have played as Germany before. What What am I thinking about? I have played as Germany before. I played as Hadrish. That was not easy. Oh, God. Now the game is lagging so hard. Okay. Okay. Now we have the German Civil War. That's good. Bring out the tinderbox. Um, hopefully it's... Uh, let me just check on one thing real quick. All right, my apologies about that. Just, I saw the spinning blue wheel on Windows um, when the game was lagging so hard, so that just gets me worried that it wasn't recording anymore, but we're still back. Anyways, the President's Daily Brief. Mr. President, we believe that the best way to curtail Japanese economic and military power is to draw them into a new and escalating conflicts. Get them bogged down in a new jungle war and they'll feel the pain. Nixon nods carefully, considering his advisor's comments. Alright, Bob, go on. One of McNamara's aides walks up with a pair of rolled up maps. Each one bears a detailed map of a Southeast Asian country. Two of the largest potential targets are Indonesia and the Philippines. Indonesia is both a literal and political archipelago, riven by Japanese resource extraction and military regimes and native collaborators. Meanwhile, the Philippines is a rebellious nation, as we know well, and the population is believed to be very resentful of their occupiers. Both countries have active rebel groups which we could use as proxies against Tokyo. Nixon presses his hands together in a gesture of contemplation, staring at the black and red markings that dot the maps. Okay, Bob, what form will this proxy warfare be taken? McNamara's aides pull out more maps, more lists, more explanations, and over the course of the morning, a bloody strategy to drive new knives into the empire of Japan takes form. They'll have no peace with honor. Friends in the Philippines, supply weapons to the Filipino rebels, 
The Japanese will not be happy if they discover support. Indonesia calls. Hmm. Let's try that. What atrocities the IJA and their lackey Sukarno have committed has done little to uproot Indonesia's resistance movements out of its shadows. The Indonesian people's well-earned reputation for guerrilla warfare, first against the Dutch, now against the Japanese, ensured a strong, discreet network of blind spots and contacts within the archipelago running without pause for decades. One could ask for no better lifeline for the myriad rebel groups, all waiting for an opportune moment to swing their dolorous strike. Through mutual friends' facilitations, the CIA will export a and will export earmarked material to the rebels' thankful hands. With arms and ammunition on hand, the rebels can slink back into an unseen nukes and crannies of the Indonesian jungles, waiting for days, weeks, months, however long it takes for their time to strike. And when that time comes, they will be well stocked and ready. And if, oh, look at this. Yeah. Hadrish is really not easy to play as. I don't recommend it because it's just so difficult. And the world kind of goes boom. Especially with Hadrish. His forces are split in half, so basically all you're left with are over here in Alsace Lorraine, which really sucks. Really, really sucks. The Reich's frontier can no longer hold. And Burgundy, good lord. Speidel? Cool. Franco Burgundian War. The NPP calls for impeachment. Ooh. Some political theorists believe that ideas are top down phenomenon. They start in the minds of politicians and think tanks who use the media to spread them, and they percolate into the minds of the people. Others think it is bottom-up. They gain momentum among the common folk, and as they gain more publicity, the message bubbles up towards and reaches those with actual political power and the ability to shape policy. But whatever it's top-down, bottom-up, or merely a case of great minds thinking alike, uh, though the Republican Democrats would consider it, fools seldom differ. Both the MPP politicians and the constituents are calling for the beginning of impeachment procedures against President Nixon. If they begin, he would be the first president to be impeached since Andrew Johnson nearly a century prior, but now that is not what concerns Nixon. He's well aware that his rivals have little love for them, and the projected effects on his 64 re-election bid are currently minimal. What he fears is not what the MPP is saying, but the fact that some of the RDs are starting to listen. Let's hope this we can still blow this all over. Well, we'll see. 0.39 political power date, not great. Decreased black arms trading. Oh. Expansion into Africa. The Warsaw Uprising. Cool. Uh, we're not going to do this. Let's see. There's no point doing that. Brother fights brother in the most uncivil of wars. Uh, let's see. We could help him out, but... Mm. So we have the Kingdom of England. And then we have... Him of... Dudes. Well, I can't send them stuff. I mean, I guess through the decisions we, are, we can... But the left resistance, wow. Formation of Africa Shield, oh boy. This is not going to be good. Hmm. Yeah, that's not going to be good at all. Plenty of fuel. Plenty of reserve money. The Serbs rise up. And Karl Dernit seizes Crimea. Ooh, I always like this nation. Pluscow. Smolsk. These nations actually look kind of okay. Wow. Oh, there goes Moscovy. This feels like EU4 now. Uh oh. Uh, mm -hmm. uh. Can't send volunteers yet. The South African War. Oh god, things are exploding everywhere. African chaos? Typical. Oh, the dominoes shall stop. Oh, Albert Herzog. And the Rex Commissariat Novigan. The Father Lion abandons the Great Fortress. Alright, so... Hmm. I guess the next one I'm going to do is probably uh, protecting your interests. We've got to intervene. Difficult to pull out if future events require it. Ooh. Influence of Partisans of Fighting Filipinos. Strike the match. Ooh, Africa Shield. Oh, boy. Oh boy. They definitely need our help now. Um. Oh, crud. Oh, uh, the African National Congress declared war. Uh. I don't think I've ever seen this one. Look at his facial hair. Wow. Man, that sounds. That looks so cool. I wish I could grow facial hair like that. I've never seen the African National Congress come about. Low. Wow. Uh, vertical envelopment. Yeah, that'd be pretty good to do. 
Recovery rate plus 40%. Jesus Christ. Defense is good. Organization is good. What's not to love? Oh man, I should have done this, have done this earlier. Alright, let's go ahead and do this one. Protecting our interest. Once the game stops loading. Okay, so with the newly realized importance of South Africa, it is essential that we gain a foothold there before anything else occurs. Not only will this allow us to react quicker to anything that occurs to our lamp of democracy in Africa, but also help us with justifying interventions to our own population. After all, we ought to protect our troops overseas, and you'd be hard-pressed to find an American who disagrees. Oh. Well, we'll see what happens. No, nothing yet. The Kingdom of Caucasia? Oh, no, no. I've seen this a few times now. The kingdom is okay. The Shinano Files. This morning's issue of the San Francisco Chronicle featured a fairly prominent political cartoon printed far larger than most others are. Specifically, one of President Nixon's on his knees and hands, blubbering as he kisses the boots of Goblin Face, Buck Tooth, Hirohito, and dries them using a dirty American flag. The caption below reads, The Tricky Dick Cow Tao. Word of Nixon's under-the-table negotiations with the Japanese after the IJN Shinano bombing has reached the public, and the hawks in the media are having a field day with it. While the negotiations are indisputably legal, it nonetheless undermines Nixon's image as a devoted patriot who fights for the evils against fascism across both oceans. The National Progressive Party has already started drafting advertisements mocking the deal in anticipation of the 64 election, and the already hawkish public in California is eating them up. Despite California being his home state, Nixon's odds of electoral victory in November took look to be more of an uphill battle than anticipated. He stopped the war and this is how they treat him? Jesus Christ, his eyes, he look terrible. Woo! Smash the dominoes. Oh, cool. Money? Yes. Cool. Goodbye. All right, so this time has come for the greatest or grandest battle against fascism since the Second World War. The last stand against autocracy abroad and worldwide, a second crusade against the forces of evil that have forced the free people of the world underneath their autocratic jackboots. With one fell swoop, we will stop the Nazis from securing a foot new foothold in Africa. For if we do not, surely the brutal invasion of our South Africa partners will only be the beginning. If Africa falls, next falls India, wouldn't... Then, with the East secured, the Nazis will soon be in the Americas as well. At least this is a sentiment that every American general with a foot in the White House door has loudly shouted, berated the Senate over, rallied the troops with, and harassed the media with, as a seemingly every man who has ever held a gun has proclaimed the time for a final battle against a fascist menace, while many members of the Republican Democratic Party have seemed nervous over the situation. Proposing some doubts that this domino theory is as immediate a threat as proposed, proposed, or that entering war with direct servants of the right can end in anything besides a greater conflict, it is most surprising that several members of the NPP have stepped across the Senate out to agree. Leftists and the NPP have questioned what exactly the RD-dominated military establishment proposes as any end goal in this conflict and what plan they may have to deal with Africa even if there is some sort of victory, while the far right of the party has showed some suspicious hesitance to do battle with the fascists. Uh-oh. Regardless, however, the president seems a dead seems dead set on an intervention in South African conflict, with the President Nixon seemingly hoping that a knockout punch on the Reich's commissars will save his flagging administration and halt the impending impeachment vote. Goodbye, my darlings. Hello, Kuruman. Ooh. Division speed attack. Oh, wow. Stingers. With mini guns. Two Vulcan 20mm, six barrel Gatling cannons. Good lord, don't get me excited. Oh, my goodness. Gunsh oh, gunships. Wait, what is that in the tree? Helicopters? No. Uh, <laughs> we got stealth stuff down here. Spiders and raptors? That's really cool. Is this a heavy aircraft? Uh, Strata Fortresses, Valkyrie, Ivark, Galaxy Blackbird. Oh, the Blackbird's down here. That's kind of cool. Hornet, Comet. Oh, we got Nighthawks, too. That's kind of cool. Uh, I must have missed it then. Light aircraft, Fighting Falcon, Eagles. Yeah, I must have really missed it. Wow. Cool. And we got some more events, so whatever. Um, yeah, it's got to be here somewhere, though. Arrow revealing. Whatever. Cool. Subsidized rolling. Oh, my goodness. A South African war. The Windhoek plan. The people. The South African war rages on. And we must do everything in our power to win it. Unless the dominoes fall elsewhere. Many parts of our people, however, are not so willing to go find some far-off land, and the longer we stay in the war, the more cred credence the world will have. Send over guns. Let's see, just get dent with the war will rise a little. Uh, we probably need to do that, so... I don't want to lose political power, though. Greatly expand ground operations? Ooh, discontent will go up higher. The domestic situation. Oh, we can implement the draft. Oh, man, we could really piss people off. Well, 
I don't see anything that could give us more political power, which really sucks. Real and the troops. Change, spread our message. Good lord, we got so many things. I, I look like we have to get involved. Uh, oh wait, this is more than 49 command power. Thunder, strategic bombing, discontent with the war. Actually, can I send volunteers now? I can. We can send one. Um, that's really not ideal. I will send what we can for now. But I'm going to conclude today's episode right there. So, the South African War started. We got almost to 64. We're so close. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. In which, in the next episode, we're going to start campaigning for uh, elections once again. But, I hope you enjoyed today's episode, guys. If you did, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow when we get involved, probably in South Africa. And maybe just stay there. We'll see what happens. I don't know. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.